Thousands of breakfast and brunch places are strewn throughout New York City, but only a few are famous for their pancakes. We visited Clinton Street Baking Company, Sunday in Brooklyn, and Taiyaki NYC to find the best pancakes in town. We started filming in March and it's been six months. We were kind of put on a setback because of the pandemic. We've already eaten at all three places. At each place, we will be looking at three qualities. One, we're looking at texture. The pancake should be fluffy and cooked all the way through and not too dry. Two, we're looking for color. We're looking for a golden brown pancake that ensures a slight crispiness on the exterior of the pancake. And finally, three toppings. We're looking at toppings that will accompany the pancakes but not steal the spotlight. All right, let's roll the rest. So we're going to Clinton Street Baking Company. This place is probably the most famous place we're going to be going to yes. for pancakes. I've been trying to get it in here for like three years. There's always a line. I can never get it in. This place honestly has won so many awards for their blueberry pancakes, and that's what we're going to be trying. I am so excited here. Let's go. Let's go. I don't think our pancakes are the best. I know they are. They're just like the perfect balance of sweet, savory, luxurious deliciousness. The recipe is not secret. It's the more of the technique and the procedure of the way it's put together that makes them so special, plus great ingredients. Basically, a pancake is a cake batter. So when you flip it, all the active ingredients like the salt and the sugar and the baking powder and all of that, it's a chemical reaction. When you flipped it, that's when it rose. And those active ingredients are making a cake rise. And that's, that's the less scientific explanation for it. Are you guys learning all anything here? I'm learning so much. <laughs> we do a, a, a sprinkling of fresh wild Maine blueberries. Wild Maine blueberries are the key to our blueberry pancakes. They only grow in Maine for a month, and then they're harvested. They are an intense blueberry flavor packed in a tiny little berry. The ring on the pancake is like the Lord of the Rings. It's gotta be there. It's the butter that creates that crispy ring that makes the texture of eating what you're eating so delicious. And it's also a look we eat with our eyes, so as soon as you see them, you see that beautiful, perfect sphere. We put a spoon of our homemade blueberry sauce on the top, which is a beautiful complement to the fresh blueberries in the pancake. We have this amazing maple butter. It has a lot of essence of butterscotch, caramel, brown sugar. It takes all those nuances on, and it's really the perfect accompaniment to our pancakes. to know what's so special about these pancakes. No. So color-wise, it's everything and more that we wanted. A beautiful golden brown, perfectly cooked. Like, this is my ideal looking pancake. I know, I didn't know this, but the ring actually is something that you should look for yeah. because it signifies that there is like a crispiness mm -hmm. to it. Oh my god. Mm -mm. Topping game, mm -mm. they won. I'm, I have tears in my eyes. That's, you actually do. Like, that was like instantaneous. Like I'm, gonna cry. I'm not even kidding. Oh my god, you just got really emotional. I know. No, I'm not even kidding. This is one of the best things I've ever eaten this season. You only tried the topping. I know. Shall we? <sighs> Dip. Wow. It's astonishing it, how pancakes can be this good. Mm -hmm. It's like a maple butter sauce, and it has like a caramelly taste to it. I die for that, because I thought it was gonna be like super buttery mm -hmm. and heavy, but it has the maple, and that makes it a little lighter. Yeah, and it's a little nutty. Yes, 
That's the word I was looking for. Can I talk to you about this sauce? You may talk to me about this sauce. What's There's up? lemon in it. That's and true. that's what the game changer is. It has that nice like burst of acidity uh -uh. and freshness to it. You know I'm a sweet kind of gal. And every element of this pancake is done so perfectly. I'm trying to like be like, oh, let's work on this. I can't think of anything to work on. If you pick apart each part of the pancake, there's not much to critique. No. And also, it's not as sweet as I was expecting it to be. We totally completely forgot about the fact that there are not just blueberries on top, there are blueberries inside. That's essential. And it does give that extra texture, like it bursts with juice and flavor. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. They taste like amped up, like childhood pancakes. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite element if you had to choose one? I honestly think the texture mm -hmm. and color is like, it can't be beat. We're going to Sunday in Brooklyn next. I have heard of this place. Really? Yes, they're the ones on Instagram with the sauce everywhere and the pancakes look so dark and amazing. That's exactly it. This place is famous for its malted mm. Sunday pancakes. They're even trademarked. Really? I'm so excited. Let's try them. I wanted them to look kind of crazy and almost cartoon-like, like the ones you see like in the Looney Tunes, you know, like big pat of butter, crazy looking maple syrup. But, um, you know, we wanted to take a different kind of approach to it to separate ourselves from every other restaurant. We added malt powder to the pancakes to give it a little bit of like sweetness and some caramelization. The malt powder gives the pancakes a bit of nuttiness and sweetness to it. Helps it kind of brown a little bit more evenly. Gives it more of like a caramelized flavor. We don't overmix them, we even keep them kind of lumpy. By not mixing too much and letting the, the batter rest on its own, you get more of a fluffier texture. To cook the pancakes, we have a six inch nonstick pan that we spray with a little bit of Pam spray. We heat it over medium heat, about eight, eight ounce ladle worth of pancake batter. Just slowly cook it until it almost sets on one side. Uh, once we flip it, we put it in the oven for about three to four minutes until it sets. For us, the pan uh, helps solidify the form of the pancake. If you do it on the griddle, it has the tendency to kind of spread out, and that's fine as well. We just prefer that um, using a pan with tall sides helps give it more height and structure. Instead of using syrup, I mixed uh, hazelnut butter into the syrup with a little bit of water and some salt to make it kind of salty sweet, and you know, it really kind of came out unique in its way. It's a little bit more rich and thick, kind of coats the pancake a little bit better. It's got more of a salty sweet flavor as opposed to just maple syrup. And we always add a pat of brown butter to it to kind of give it some more richness to it. We torch the butter, uh, mostly because I find that it's frustrating when you get cold butter on a pancake and you can't spread it. It looks cartoonish. It doesn't look like a real thing, it looks mythical. <laughs> Can we eat them here? Yes, let's do it. Look at the bounce when you cut it. And look how golden. This is like a full on cake. It's more cake than pancake. Truly. It's, I'm, can It's we, a little big for me. That's not big for me. Okay. Me. I've never tasted anything like that sauce. It's so much saltier than I thought it would be. It is a combination of sweet and savory. You get little bits of the hazelnut that's like blended in, so you get a little bit of like that texture. It's like a nut buttery, mm -hmm. but smoother. It honestly, they compare it to Nutella, but I think it tastes more like, like a saltier Ferrero Rocher. It's everything that you would want in a normal pancake, right? Like it's fluffy, it has the golden brown exterior, mm -hmm. it has the maple syrup is actually mixed into the sauce. I like that. And the butter isn't just a regular butter. It's, a it's brown, brown butter, butter, which we love. And we learned, I learned today, that is, <sighs> it's caramelized brown sugar in the butter. Yes. So it's everything you want in a pancake, but just better. Yeah. So here's the thing, Han. Should we taste a bite without the sauce on yeah. it? Like, 
to just judge the pancake. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, you already tried it. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. The actual pancake is so fluffy. And it got a little crispy outside. And that's which is what we for want. Us. We love that. It is more cakey though than any pancake you guys ever had. The signature fluffiness is from malted barley mm -hmm. and buttermilk. So that gives it that fluffy texture, but it's also giving it that nice like fattiness from the buttermilk. Mm -hmm. I love the golden brown of the actual pancake. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say is probably a lot of people disagree with me, but like the sauce is very overpowering. The sauce that serves as the topping is delicious, but it's like kind amazing. of overwhelming I'm and like eating. does kind of like mask the overall pancake. Yeah. It has been six months since I last saw Heron and we ate at the first two locations. We are going to be meeting at Tayaki. It's a Japanese inspired dessert shop known for its souffle pancakes. They're supposed to be the fluffiest in town. So we're mostly known for our uh, Japanese ice cream with the fish shaped cone. But uh, when we launched the souffle pancakes, uh, it became an instant hit. And we got the inspiration from Japan, so a lot of people wanted to try it. For our version, it's more light, it's very cloudy, it's very soft, and it almost melts in your mouth. That's what we're going for. We want it to be a little light, a little sweet, not too sweet. So the first thing to do is make our base. We use that with eggs, our secret flour, and some milk. Well, the flour is super secret, we don't tell anybody that, but it's the second secret we're willing to share, which is technique. So the secret behind the souffle pancakes is the, uh, the meringue. Right, so we basically whip up some egg whites, make it nice and airy, and then we fold it into our base. The batter becomes very light, very airy, and we try to cook it as soon as possible because the longer it sits, the more the air escapes from the batter. We actually pre-make uh, parchment paper molds, uh, and that's just to, again, uh, keep the quality consistent, right? It's easier to have them and to keep the pancakes at a certain size and a certain shape. So we offer two different types of pancakes. First we have the classic souffle pancake, which is a, basically a Japanese twist on the classic American pancake. And then the second variation is our matcha souffle pancake, which we actually uh, add our own homemade uh, matcha cream sauce. It also comes with whipped cream, powdered sugar, a baby taiyaki with red bean inside, which is our trademark. And we also have a whipped butter on top. I thought that the Sunday in Brooklyn pancakes were like the fluffiest. Oh, so did I. And this just doesn't compare. This is number one fluffy. Number one fluffy. Number one fluff. I'm gonna try this little taiyaki topping first. To me, that tastes more like a waffle. It has the mm. crunchy exterior and the soft, plush interior. It does have some give to it. Yeah, it's it stays. Oh god. It's like the most delicate sponge cake. That is that that's unlike anything. Not I've ever like had. any of the pancakes we've had. It's fluffier than the other two by far. Oh, it's like a cloud in your mouth. It absolutely disintegrates in your mouth. I feel like if there was a spectrum where Clinton Street was like the crunchiest pancake, yeah. and this is like the softest. They'd be at opposite ends. The toppings, I want to give it like a fair run. This is like the basic version. Mm -hmm. We tried the matcha one. Oh, yeah. Unreal. Unreal. Like if we were to loop in the matcha topping, I think equally as good as Clinton Street. I've never eaten anything like this. I can say that with confidence. Never. But do you like it? I really, really, really like it. But we've had so many good pancakes, I... Because <sighs> I feel like I had my winner. And now you I try know. this. I know, and I I'm know, like, I know. I don't know. I know. If I'm being completely honest, we had to look back at a lot of the clips. We've come to a conclusion, right? I I'm ready. I am too. Okay. 
My intuition is telling me we're gonna have a shared opinion. I have a good feeling about this one. Three, two, two one. one. Yay! Yeah. This is the first time since the first episode that we agree. How we have come full circle. What did you love about Clinton Street? Pretty much everything. I mean, I feel like the technique and that golden ring yes. really ensured that the texture was perfect. And the toppings, I mean, that blueberry topping was unlike anything else. Super bright, refreshing, and the maple butter was alone the best topping we had. Oh my God, what about so you? Good. Why did you like Clinton Street? The texture for me was like Goldilocks. It was the perfect combination of crispy and plush in the middle. The golden brown was they really got it to a science. They flipped it at the exact right time to make it perfect. And the toppings truly made me cry. The brightness of the blueberries and the lemon and the maple syrup, oh, it was insane. You, I've never seen you cry over food. I've never seen anyone cry over food. I've never had a spiritual feeling like that. I feel like since we both agreed mm -hmm. right up front is a testament in and of itself that these pancakes are, in fact, best in town. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with us? Do you agree that Clinton Street Baking Company has the best pancakes in New York City? Let us know in the comments. Stay safe.